Welcome to this new tutorial on using the Arduino. Uh, this time we're going to be controlling a PCA9685 PWM servo driver module but instead of using it to control servos we're going to be using it to control LEDs. Now during this tutorial there'll be some code and the code will work on the Arduino and the ESP32 so uh, to get that code if you just look at the link there for the Digital Town website uh, you can find all the information that you'll have today in the video it's all there all the time so let's get started so this is what one of the boards looks like uh, just checked on eBay because uh, the prices are changing every five minutes due to uh, our little container problems from China at the moment and these are going for about six pounds in the UK on eBay so they have gone up a little bit I think I paid about three pound fifty for these ones but still right let's have a quick look at how you connect them up so let's have a quick look here so we have a ground pin an output enable which we will not be using that basically allows you to turn all the outputs off or on in one go I just don't bother using it we have the SCL, which is the I2C clock pin, the SDA, which is the I2C data pin. You'll see how to connect those up to your Arduino in a minute. Then we have VCC. Now this is power to control the board. There is also another one here, V+. By the way, this board runs on about 3 to 5 volts. Um, stay within that, you'll be fine. You also then have this V plus and that is matched by V plus up here. Now V plus is where you would put in a power supply to power whatever is connected to here. Now you might think, well, you know, we're only going to connect some LEDs, but one of the things about these boards is that they can be daisy chained. So by changing the addresses up here, which we'll look into, you can actually connect, I think it's 62 of these boards together, which would allow you to run 992 LEDs or servos. Now, even with the best will in the world, I think a uh, Arduino can usually manage to power one, maybe two servos at the most before it sort of runs out of juice so you require external power now the difference between this V plus and this V plus is if you connect through the screw terminals there is a polarity um, protection built in so if you go and wire the positive into the ground and the ground into the positive your board's going to survive if you get that back to front over here you will probably release the magic smoke from out of your board. You have been warned. So down the bottom, most of these boards come with a set of yellow pins, red pins and black pins. So the yellow pin will go to the positive um, leg of our LED. We're not going to use the red pins. Those would be the power supply if we were using a servo. And then finally, of course, we've got the ground pins. Now, it is obviously a common ground. So in my projects, I will often have um, obviously a separate wire going to each of the yellow while I will return my LEDs through a common ground and just connect to one of these pins. So why would I use these? Well, I use these for model railways and what I've been doing recently is basically putting one of these boards into an individual building that means that I can have sort of 16 LEDs within that building and then only have um, five wires coming off of here it just makes life very easy and because they are addressable it means I can have a different bo um, board in each building and control all the individual LEDs individually because it is PWM, it also means rather than having the LEDs on or off, I can actually alter the brightness of them, uh, which means, and I can alter that at any time, so I can make some great effects, you know, fire flickers and stuff like that, arc welders. All of that can be done just 
on an individual pin while the other pins maintain a steady state or you could have them all doing the same thing it's up to you these pins at the top you basically solder across them the board by default has a hex value of 40 but by soldering across these different pads you can change the address of the board so that is the basics of it the other joy of course with leds is you do not require a resistor that saves some wiring so uh yeah for me for doing model railways these are an ideal module for um, controlling the lights in buildings so let's look how we connect this and uh, so let's move down so the connections are quite simple for our first test we're going to connect the ground we're going to connect the VCC we're going to put that to 5 volts or if you're on a uh, the ESP32 here you're going to use 3.3 volts and then we're going to connect the SCL and the SDA now on an UNO that's A4 and A5 bottom corners on a MEGA it's pins 20 and 21 and on an ESP32 it's pins 21 and 22 now if you go to the Arduino reference on wire it will give you the pins for a couple of other boards as well so for instance the Arduino Ju actually has two I2C buses on it so on that one bizarrely you could have uh, 62 boards times two all being controlled at the same time so you could have almost 2000 LEDs running more than enough for most of us so that is the connection and now what we'll do is we'll look at our first sketch which will test that connection so our first sketch we're not even going to have to write it we're going to go to file um, examples find the wire library i2c scanner just load up the sketch and this is a sketch that basically looks on the i2c bus to see what addresses it can find now I've already got the sketch loaded so let's open up the serial monitor and see what it's doing so as you can see it's having a look I think it's every couple of seconds and it can find the address now what I'm going to do if I just bring this image back in I'm now just going to short out a couple of these pads to show you the address change so uh, bear with me let's see if I can get this to work I'm going to try and short out pad a zero he says a bit fiddly there we go and as you can see the address has changed to 41 um, I'm now going to try and short out another pad I think this is about a three uh, not properly shorted there we go dress has changed to 48 so we can see that our board is being found and now that I've unshorted everything it's gone back to its default address of 40 so let's move on to our next sketch So what we're going to do now is look at a very, very basic sketch. Uh, it's going to start off by blinking the LEDs five times, and then it's going to increase the brightness for all the LEDs from completely off to full on. Now, I've tested this sketch on an Arduino Uno and an ESP32. It'll work on a Mega. It'll work on just about anything. But... Um, you know those are the boards it's been tested on so let's go through this thing so the first thing we have to do is include the wire library um, this is basically the i2c bus controller which controls those sda and sc scl pins the other library that we're going to have to have is the adafruit pwm servo library so in your library manager let me just put in adafruit 
pwm servo and let it do its stuff there you can see that's the name of the library the awm adafruit pwm servo driver library and uh, that's more information available um, you need it installed right once that's installed we then have to call an instance of this servo driver for each individual board now on my first example here i'm only using one board so i've called it boringly pca 9685 now i'll be honest on my model railways i will call this station or give it a name related to the building that i'm using it for now i've put the address in here if you don't put any address in uh, then it defaults to 40 but i would advise you to get into the habit of putting the address in i've done a second example here of an address of a hex value of 50. now if i uncommented this i could then have both of these boards running together first one's called pca 9685 the other's called second pca 9685 and this time i've put it as an address of 50. obviously that value depends on which pins you've soldered across but if you wanted to add a second board that's how it's done so i'll leave that in there as an example right setup um, obviously i've begun the serial tested the serial output i've started the wire library running and then i've begun my pca 9685 now obviously if i'd got a second one i'm going to have to put a second line in I then start the set the frequency at 1600 now that is the maximum for this board I'm not even going to bother explaining what that is about there is a link on the digital town website to this page which is the Adafruit um, page they wrote the library they've done a great bit on how to use servos and all the other bits with it so take a look at that for more information um, I'm not going to repeat what they've already done so once we've done that basically the board is set up and it's running now I've created a couple of integers Q and W just because I'm uh, put some loops in don't need that that was from something earlier right so what we're going to do for W equals 0 W is smaller than 5 so basically for five cycles I'm going to go through Q is 0, Q is smaller than 16. Now, if you're wondering what that's about, you've got channel 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, you know, right up to 15. So what this is actually doing is I'm going to loop five times and I'm going to set the value for all the channels. And the first value I'm going to do is obviously Q is the channel zero um, I'll explain this in a minute 4095 is fully on if that was a thousand it'd be about 25 percent on now I'm just I've explained in the code comments about what this is so Q is the channel so the channel is which of these pins we are controlling the zero is to do with the PWM and it's actually the point in the cycle that it's going to turn the power on because what PWM do does is it turns the power on and off in a cycle so the reason it makes the LED look uh, brighter or duller is because if you like at one point it's on for 25 percent of the time as we've seen in code here or if I set the value to 4095, the maximum, then the LED is on 100% of the time. You don't need to panic about it. Just leave it at zero if you're a beginner and just leave it at that. So we've got our channel, our turn on time, which is straight away, and our turn off time, 4095, means right at the end of the cycle. So the LED is fully on. Um, we're then going to serial print out on just so that we know what's going on we're going to delay for one second those of you who remember the blink sketch this is where it comes from i don't like using delay but in this case we'll just use it and then what it's going to do is for the 
same um, thing it's going to set this time to 4096 now the maximum number of steps is 4095 if you set it to 4096 it's outside of range and it is completely off alternatively you could uncomment this bit and you could set it to 25% brightness again have a little bit of a play with the code afterwards and then I've got it to serial print off and then it's going to wait a second then what I've done in the code again the Q value you know I'm going from um, 0 to 16 I'm doing this on all channels if you're wondering why I'm doing it on all channels um, you don't have to connect any an LED to every channel I'll be honest on my little test one that I've got running next to me it's only got an LED on one channel but by getting it to do this on every channel whichever one you connect it up to it's going to work or if you want to connect it to everything go for it this time what it's doing is it's going to do a cycle from 0 to 4095 because it's going to stop when it gets to less than 4096 and it's going to set the PWM frequency and what it will do is it will start at zero fully off and it will increase in brightness what it keeps doing is delaying a very short period of time and you will see that the LED slowly increases in brightness now one of the odd things um, the way this works obviously it's fooling your eye but your eye is not as stupid as uh, the PWM would like to make out so there seems times where it seems to get brighter and then it stays at one brightness it is actually changing but your eye does not seem to be fooled as well so if we run this um, all I'm, I'm not going to show you a video of an LED flashing on and off that's pretty boring but as you can see it's just going to tell us it's going on off on off on off and then all of a sudden it will take a break and now the LED is slowly increasing in brightness as it works its way through. I can tell you that increase in brightness is going to take quite a few seconds uh, because 4095 values is a long way to go even if you're delaying for just a very short period of time. So that is basically how you would set the brightness of the LED turn the LED off, turn it fully on. It's basically how it works. You could have changed this to let's say channel 10. If I just want to do something on channel 10, that is how the code would look. So that is the basics of how this sketch works. So I hope that's been useful to you. Uh, I find these boards extremely useful and I shall be doing a tutorial on what I'm actually doing with these and how I'm controlling them through an ESP32 using ESP now for some stuff with model railways. But if model railways aren't your thing and you just want to control the LED, just go to the Digital Town website. You can see the link there on the screen and that will give you the whole write-up and all the diagrams everything you need to complete your project including all the code is there for download um, hope you enjoyed that if you did click the like and uh, if you really enjoyed it click the subscribe button thanks again